Yeah, don't two step with junkies. That that's an honest story. I'm telling the truth there. So let's see. Um, for about two years, I wrote mostly uh, Hawaiian poetry. Not not actual Hawaiian poetry, but I was born in Hawaii, so most of the, most of the past two years of my writing dealt with that. And uh, recently, I've moved away from that sort of uh, textual happiness to the shitty uh, South Louisiana and small towns that I grew up in. And I'll just say uh, that reflects a little bit more of like a good uh, unconscious feeling, you know, uh, even though the words themselves might be a little bit fucked up. So uh, this first poem is an elegy to my father, even though he's not dead. <laughs> Tide, the title of the poem is uh, Tide Pulls Me Outward on Galveston Beach at Night, Dad's Camera Rolling. He always played the part of victim in my story. The female stranger's mouth, I remember, was of incense barnacles. Jesus Christ, she said. Whereas the video shows a different scene, my small, fragile body tossed in the ocean. Look closely the seaweed flows outward. In a way, I was flattered to be the star of my own death, his hands directing the frame. From those hands, I learned to keep a camera still, to detach myself from trauma, collect instructional footage on drowning. After all, he is a registered nurse. Sometimes at home, we joked about zipping up body bags, which mom never found funny. Maybe if I had drowned on that beach and left a record of my body's dissolution, she would have stopped worrying and moved back to Hawaii, to a nicer beach. You know, I'd like that for her. All right, this poem is called uh, Nijinsky Breasts and Legs, and Nijinsky, really, he's the only man I could ever love because uh, there's no videos of him. It, it, it's perfect, so. Nijinsky Breasts and Legs. We rolled the finest cigarette to place in your lips the night that your body lay there white. The pallbearers were late, but we waited in the cypress to watch you dance one more time. A man singing terraplane blues until the gas ran dry, then laid the strings to rest, and the front porch was barren leaves, our lives blossoming into willows, and I found her there, slicing the moon. She to teach me how to make love, her French words to give me a way out. We will never come close enough, that is, you and I, or you will understand. I gave her my skin in sleep, you gave me time, but I will never understand her the way I should. Let's see here. Uh... All right, this poem is entitled Changing Joe Falcon, and pardon my French, literally, I'm not speaking figuratively whatsoever. So, uh. Allons à Lafayette, mais pour changer ton nom. Let's go to Lafayette, but only to change. I'll call you skeleton, knowing that you will protest. On va t'appeler, madame, madame, can I come Then to the judge, we'll appeal, ma belle. Belle, you call me too, though I'm not sure why. We left the courtroom for the planetarium, abandoned us three empty vessels, two bodies of flesh and one of stone. Comment tu crois, mais moi je peux faire, mais moi tu seul? Small you are, too cute, you make a criminal of me. I see in my dreams, my lips, flesh path to my insides, there in your purse. I find you crying at the windowsill, looking in. Through the telescope's cracked lens, I decline you, you ascend. You wanted me to call you babe, after all. Mais toi, mes jolies coeurs, car donc mes quoi t'as fait? Tell me how I can make it alone, endearing. I give you up to the desert. 
si loin comme moi, Jesus, toi, mais ça, ça me fait pitié. If my lines have come this far from you, well then, then you make me pitiful. Come back to me, the cacti have enough of you. That's my mistranslation of Joe Falcon. So. This poem is called Frameworks, and it's frameworked quite uh, emphatically. I will call this poem sentimentally Our Meadows. Mother disappears, the kitchen floor is silent now. Sin is the smell of a carpet recently vacuum cleaned, and we have sinned. At this point, we only pretend to be infantile and reek of phony innocence. We should crawl on all fours from this play school tent with leaves of fake grass embroidered across the sides. The meadows in North Louisiana are a lighter green than this. The sun hits there directly while this light is filtered through a den's window. We are alone for now to undress some, to feel one another. Mostly, I wanted to know what made you different from me beyond our pulpy six-year-old skin. Him draped to the side through an unzipped fly, her spread eagle in the tent's soft light, and if I ever have a daughter, I will name her Meadow. Two more, like, quick Louisiana poems. Bear with me, I know you guys get enough of this Louisiana shit, so... Uh, this poem is entitled, Acadian House, A Wedding. Or, no, Acadian Wedding, A House. Maybe Acadian House, A Wedding is better. But, uh, Acadian Wedding, A House. We should build a cabin here, give me a shovel, to dig the earth, to bury her body. For a man alone, there are always two women, the buried and the digger of graves. Life itself is a tearing and a torn. A lonely man is not a tree which grows from one to nothing, but the moss clinging to, limbs dying, returns to the flat ground. In a portrait of our house, a child playing to the left, a black cat, only minor characters. Your gaze from the porch is most important, or my lack thereof, hat turned away from the painter's eye. You left the windows open, and the sheets will blow away. We buried Psyche in the cornfields behind all paradises fail until we die. Pretend that this was nothing more than the accidental pricking of fingers. Gaze at me so as to say, put the glass down, it's time to come home. Still, there is a picket fence between us. Even the child stands on my side. The darkness of the house makes me want to cry, both for you and my tears, salty, bitter. A fence is not hard to cross. Give me time. I miss you so. One more. This one's really short. So, this is actually moving away from Acadia. This is, this is France, strictly France. It's called Painting Brigitte. Brigitte is walking naked in her chamber sunlight. You have seen her, haven't you, little sparrow? I'd say. It is so depressing to see her move this way across the silken sheets. She was once a painter, you know, but now she holds a dimitas and paints herself across the bed for me as well as you. <laughs> <laughs>